Slum 1200 GGI Mob and I'm back. Slum 1200 GGI Mob and I'm back. Slum 1200 GGI Mob and I'm back. I'm back, back. Tell they bury me I bet this gang gang shit be the death of me All I know is hustle All I know is win All I know is hustle All I know is get it in All I know is hustle All I know is win All I know is hustle All I know is get it in All I know is hustle All I know is win All I know is hustle All I know is get it in All I know is hustle All I know is win All I know is hustle All I know is get it in Noontime in Miami. Downtown, office workers are at lunch. In the neighborhoods, first graders are on the playground. And on television, Nina has just told Cliff that she loves him. But also at this hour in Miami, on a shortwave radio band that most radios cannot pick up, the coded instructions from South America are coming in from a transmitter in Medellin, Colombia, for members of the world's largest cocaine smuggling organization. For the last year now, government radio operators have been monitoring the secret transmissions between Medellin and Miami over what federal authorities have come to call Radio Medellin. First, there is a signal, a whistle, and then the message. In this message, cattle is the code word for cocaine. The cattle is ready. The cattle is ready. Not to worry, there is not one problem. At 8 o'clock, 8 for the first one. Radio Medellin sends out orders to dozens of Colombians who have been sent to Miami to work in the cocaine business, almost like foreign intelligence agents. Federal authorities say they discovered this man from Colombia handling large amounts of suspected drug money, and he is now under indictment. He and his family were found living quietly in a modest home with two cars and a well-kept lawn. One of dozens of Colombians, federal authorities say, have infiltrated the Miami area on orders from Colombia. They have a manual on how to fit into a community to make sure that they're not uncovered. This United States Attorney Leon Kellner says the men from Medellin know just how to set up a cover for their cocaine business. Hire a gardener to make sure that the gardening is done. Hire a family to make sure it looks like somebody is living there. Make sure that you get the newspaper and that you pick it up every day. And this is Medellin, Colombia, about an hour's flight from Bogota, where the secret radio transmissions, the orders to agents in Miami, and the cocaine all come from. This city is the headquarters of what American authorities have now identified as the Medellin Cartel, a small group of men that in the last few years has formed a near monopoly on the processing and sale of cocaine. According to American officials, controlling as much as 80% of the world supply. This is the Envigado section of Medellin, a place where outsiders are not welcome. It is here that the cocaine bosses meet to buy up the crops of coca leaves, to import the chemicals from Europe needed to process the cocaine. And it is here, somewhere, according to American authorities, that the top three men of the Medellin cartel, all fugitives, hide out and operate. They are Carlos Lader, 37, described by federal authorities as a psychopathic killer who has aligned the cartel with Colombia's M-19 terrorists. Pablo Escobar, 36, under indictment in Miami for his role in setting up cocaine bases in Nicaragua, described as Colombia's wealthiest man. Jorge Ochoa, 37, caught in Spain earlier this year, but freed and now in hiding in Colombia after allegedly bribing a Colombian magistrate to fix his case. Federal authorities say these three men now run an organization more violent and at least as powerful as the American Mafia. American authorities say it was the Medellin cartel that ordered the murder of nine Colombian Supreme Court justices and the Attorney General, the murder of a key federal witness in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and the murders in Miami of dozens of rival drug bosses. Are there places where they're more powerful than the government? 
Uh, unfortunately, I think that that may be true. Richard Gregory, one of the country's leading federal narcotics prosecutors, is now tracking the move by the Medellin cartel of its cocaine labs deep into the Colombian jungle. And Gregory says there are now intelligence reports that the cartel has a number of shoulder-held missiles, perhaps the Russian-made SAM-7 demonstrated here. You're talking about a uh, business that probably makes a couple of billion dollars a year, um, $50,000 weapon or a couple of them that would uh, ensure the protection of their laboratories doesn't surprise me at all. Reputed Columbia drug king Carlos Lader's seven-month-long trial ended this afternoon. With the prosecutor telling jurors, there is so much evidence you cannot possibly have trouble reaching a guilty verdict. Defense attorneys presented no witnesses, saying Later was an innocent businessman, victimized by other smugglers. Government witnesses described Later as one of the masterminds of a drug ring that brought 18 tons of cocaine into the country, leaving a trail of bribery, corruption, and violence across the United States and the Caribbean. Prosecutors say Later pioneered the use of planes to smuggle huge loads of cocaine into the U.S. Andy Barnes flew cocaine-filled planes for Later, including this one, which crashed near Later's Island in the Bahamas. It's like he's the one that kicked the stone off the mountain that started the avalanche, as far as what the problems we have right now with crack and the uh, huge increase in cocaine use and deaths and everything else. Government witnesses said Later paid Bahamian officials protection money so he could use this island as his base of operations. Federal prosecutors are now secretly presenting evidence to a grand jury seeking indictments against several Bahamian officials, including Please Prime Minister Lyndon Penling. I say that any indictment by any grand jury anywhere in America would be a gross miscarriage of justice and a serious breach of faith on the part of the United States government. This is part of an expanding U.S. effort to reach into foreign governments to bring to trial those involved in the movement of drugs. However, some authorities disagree on its effect. It's absolutely important and essential that we be able not only to indict these people, but to convict them and to see to it that they get a long prison term. Leaders' arrest and leaders' prosecution and leaders being jailed will stop nothing in my view. Too much money. The market is too big. After deliberating five hours, the jurors said tonight they need more time to reach a verdict. Deliberations will resume in the morning. Bruce Hall, CBS News, Jacksonville. In the Florida trial of a billionaire Colombian drug dealer, Carlos Later was accused of smuggling cocaine by the ton into the U.S. Bruce Hall was in the courtroom for the case of the drug cartel kingpin finally forced to face justice. After struggling for a week to reach a verdict, several members of the jury were in tears as they returned their decision in the trial of Colombian drug lord Carlos Later. Their verdict made a strong statement. On count one, conspiracy to bring drugs into the United States, guilty. On nine specific drug charges, guilty. On the main charge, conducting continuing criminal activities, which carries a mandatory 10-year to life sentence, guilty. This is a victory for the good guys, and uh, by the good guys I mean uh, the American people. This is truly uh, a major victory in the war on drugs. The jury of eight women and four men deliberated for seven days under extraordinarily heavy security after former Miami policemen working for later were spotted following jurors to their homes. Just before noon today, the jury returned its verdict, finding later guilty on all 11 counts of drug smuggling involving more than three tons of cocaine smuggled into Florida and Georgia. In his closing argument, the U.S. attorney, Robert Merkel, holding up one of Later's submachine guns and standing next to a cart loaded with cocaine, said Later had built his drug empire on a Bahamian island, Norman's Key, using violence and corruption. More than a hundred witnesses testified against Later, including one of Later's most important drug pilots, Andrew Barnes. We could fly out of Norman's Key with a load of coke back then and be almost 100% guaranteed of flying straight into the U.S., no matter how you did it, of, without being tailed. Some of the most damaging evidence against Later came from Later himself, a flamboyant and erratic personality who admired Adolf Hitler and who talked openly about his drug activities in this 1985 interview in the jungles of Colombia, 
at a time when later had allied himself with leftist guerrillas. Cocaine and marijuana has become a revolutionary weapon against American imperialism. And the jury was shown films that the Colombian drug boss had made at his Bahamian drug base, the remote island of Norman's Key, which later tried to pass off as a jet-set resort. The prosecutors even produced a photograph of later snorting cocaine on Norman's Key. It took six years and millions of dollars to capture later, bring him to trial, and convict him. But today's conviction is not likely to do much to really disrupt the huge cocaine business. Authorities say the well-protected cocaine smuggling routes that later pioneered through the Bahamas are still being used to smuggle tons of cocaine into this country. But Prosecutor Merkel says the verdict sends a message to the other drug bosses in Colombia. Uh, this has got to shake them a little bit. It's got to shake them a lot. And it will disrupt their peace of mind, certainly, if not their, their actual logistical um, a method of transporting cocaine because they're going to be looking over their shoulder and they know that we're coming out. for the bucks and the glory. True story. Trying to make a meal before they see dirty. True story. Gotta get it. Living life in a hurry. Get rich or die trying till the day that they bury. True story. Niggas dying for the bucks and the glory. True story.